Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. In a rational world, the deadly typhoon that struck the Philippines would get media talking about climate change. But it's barely mentioned in the coverage so far. And when it does come up, the message seems to be that we can't be certain that climate change caused this particular storm. The New York Times told readers that scientists remain cautious about drawing links between extreme storms like this typhoon and climate change. There is not enough data, they say, to draw conclusions about any single storm. And on the NBC Nightly News? While scientists can't say whether climate change contributed to this particular typhoon, they believe global warming is making storms stronger. Now, it's understandable that scientists are conservative about attributing a particular event to climate change. But by this standard, it's impossible to imagine how any extreme weather event could ever be definitively linked to climate change. It's not as if one massive hurricane is going to be stamped created by climate change, while the next one will be considered a quote-unquote normal hurricane. These catastrophes are occurring, and they will continue to occur, in a climate that has been undeniably altered. Waiting for the real climate change caused storms to bring up climate change is irresponsible and illogical. The PBS NewsHour, it should be noted, had a more helpful take, with a discussion focused not on the climate change impacts that will someday arrive, but instead on the climate change effects that are already here. Time Magazine caused a stir with this cover about New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. To some, the elephant reference was not so much about Christie being a Republican as it was a comment on his weight. There are real problems with how media cover Chris Christie, but this isn't one of them. Since his big re-election win, pundits have largely ignored his actual record in favor of fawning coverage and speculation about what kind of presidential candidate he might be. Chris Christie is someone who is magical in the way politicians can be magical, like our last three presidents. People like having them on TV. He's a good talker. He won. Now, if there's any magic here, perhaps it's the trick of getting reporters to talk about your record as governor without actually talking about, well, your record. Inside the magazine, Time readers are told that Christie has run the Garden State with combustible passion, blunt talk, and the kind of bipartisan deal-making that no one seems to do anymore. Well, when reporters talk about actual policy, they zero in on the idea that Christie is not conservative enough for the party's right-wing base. But by any reasonable standard, Christie's politics slant pretty uniformly to the right on an array of social and fiscal issues, from taxes to education policy. And the New York Times showed how Christie has resorted to the same budget gimmicks that he used to criticize Democrats for before he took office. Spending is up, and his jobs record is dismal. But reporters mostly aren't talking about these issues. Instead, they're t focused on Christie's straight-talking magic. And finally, nuclear negotiations between Iran and the U.S. and other nations hit a bump in the road last week. The developments were big enough, though, to make it onto the Sunday morning chat shows. So who was invited to talk about Iran? CBS Face the Nation sought a familiar face, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who, as usual, slammed any diplomatic progress as capitulation to Iran. He was followed by ex-Pentagon and CIA official Leon Panetta, who warned that Iran was a terrorist-supporting nation that couldn't be trusted. Over on NBC's Meet the Press and ABC's This Week, viewers heard from U.S. politicians who are supporting a plan to increase sanctions on Iran. Well, it's all very one-sided, to be sure, but there's more to say. Some of the false assumptions in play on the Iran story are evidently impossible to shake. And now we turn next to the tantalizing hope tonight that one of America's adversaries may be about to be less dangerous. The world asking, is a nuclear weapons deal with Iran finally within reach? Now, people should know by now that there's no Iran weapons deal. The United States and some other nations claim Iran is seeking to build such a weapon, but there's no evidence for this yet. But don't tell that to corporate media, which tend to frame the issue, well, along these kinds of lines. The big question, can the world trust this smile? Here's a bigger question. When it comes to Iran, can anyone trust corporate media? I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.